Sorry, I forgot to hit the record button. Um, so we're really going to start some new things next year. And so I just want to take some time to go over that with you. So first of all, what I'd like to do, though, is introduce. I have some of my teachers here with me. I'll introduce uh, them and then they can just kind of tell you what they teach. And then we'll kind of get into uh, what we do here at Cedar. So Chris, I see you up if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Chris Salisbury and I'm a CTE teacher at Cedar High School and I currently teach early childhood education, a career choices class, uh, computer apps and work-based learning. All right, Elizabeth. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth Hamilton. I am the school counselor for Cedar High School and Choice as well. Excellent, Kurt. Hi, my name is Kurt Garrison. Um, I teach science at Cedar High School. Um, I'm currently teaching uh, with uh, two English teachers and I've also, also, also taught with math and social studies teachers. Excellent, thank you, Kurt. Stacy. Hi, my name's Stacy Anderson. And I am the former principal of Cedar High School, and I've been happy to turn the reins over to Amber just recently here. I'm currently the principal of Choice. Thank you, Stacy. And let's see, do I see anybody else here? Not right now. So it looks like those are some of our teachers that, um, that we have that were able to join us tonight. So thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go through just a presentation because there's some really cool things that we've got going on here at Cedar High School. So I'm going to share my screen here in a minute. Amber? Yes. Sorry, um, not a lot of your teachers know me. Can I introduce myself? Absolutely. Please do. I'm Holly Tucker. I'm the director of transportation. I know. Oh, sorry. Hang on. I'm getting another call. <laughs> Okay, sorry. I'm the director of transportation. Not many of you know me, and I just wanted to introduce myself. Excellent. Thank you, Holly. And you brought up a good point. I need to introduce other people from the Shelton School District. So, uh, June, you're next on my list. Hi, I'm June Dumers. I'm one of the assistant principals at Shelton High School. Thank you. Robert? Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Robert Heron, I'm the Facilities and Construction Director and also the Acting Safety Director. Thank you. Paula? Good evening. I'm Paula Kennedy. I'm Assistant Principal at Bordeaux Elementary. Um, Betty? Good evening. My name is Betty Uriostegui. I'm the um, ELL Student and Family Support Supervisor. Thank you. Um, let's see, who else do I have? Sean? Hi, I'm Sean Ames. I'm one of the counselors at Shelton High School. Hello, Stacy. Adams. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't figure out how to unmute and start my camera. Hi, I'm Stacy <laughs> Adams. I'm um, currently, I'm, an, I'm a counselor at Oakland Bay Junior High, currently working with the seventh grade. Excellent, thank you. And I think the only other that I see is Kelly. Hi, I too have problems <laughs> enjoying my camera and my mic. I'm Kelly Neely, I'm the Director of Curriculum Instruction State and Federal Program. Glad to see everybody here. Excellent, thank you, and Susie. Hi, I'm Susie honecker wurz -Bicke. I'm the Freshman Academy Counselor at Shelton High. I see quite a few uh, names that are familiar from our registration that we've been doing in the last couple of weeks. So I'm super glad to see you guys coming and checking out and doing some school shopping. That's the way it's done. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much um, for being here and, um, you know, hearing a little bit about what we are because a little, a part of it too is that, you know, a lot of people even in our district because it's been such a crazy year don't really know. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if you guys can see my presentation. 
Okay. Perfect. So I'm just going to go through and um, if we have anything in the chat, um, I've got Stacy who's going to kind of try to help answer some questions or I will try to keep it open as best I can on both screens to answer questions that people may have. So, so Cedar High School, basically um, in this presentation, just so you kind of have an idea of what I'm going to talk about is what is Cedar High School? Talk about our really cool partnership with Olympic College, classes that we combine, new tech network that we uh, partner with, and how students can earn credit, because it's a little different than traditional schools. So first of all, what is Cedar High School? So Cedar High School is a brand new school here in the Shelton School District. Some people asked if we were a charter school or things like that, but no, we are actually a part of the Shelton School District and we are a nine through 12 school, and we teach everything in project-based learning. And what that means is that students are doing a lot of things hands-on. They do projects rather than just read things out of a textbook um, and answer questions or worksheets or things like that. So students are really solving real world problems that are a lot to do with our community. Our teachers focus a lot on learning standards. And what really that is is that our teachers know all the things that we're supposed to be teaching. And so rather than just kind of going through, you know, here's chapter one through chapter six, um, they go through, excuse me, the standards on how it fits into what the students are learning. We have small class sizes. Right now we have um, no more than 20 students per one teacher. Um, because right now we're very small, we actually have smaller class sizes. The really cool thing about having such small class sizes with 20 students to one teacher is that we're able to give our students a lot more of that individualized attention that they need to help them in their learning. We teach interdisciplinary courses, which I'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's really combining two or more subjects together um, to help students see the collaboration and how everything in real life fits together um, we focus on collaboration with students. So we really teach students how to work together, how to collaborate with members our, of our community, how to be a part of our community. We let students have a voice in how they learn. And then we are a member of the New Tech Network. And I'll talk to you a little bit about what that is. So the first thing I really wanna talk about is a partnership that we have with Olympic College. And Hold on, I'm going to stop screen sharing because I just realized that one of my links did not show up on my screen and I want to make sure to grab it. So just one second, my apologies. All right, I'll grab that in just a second. Sorry about that. Um, our students have worked to create a video that shows what we're doing right now. So it's pretty fun and I wanted to kind of brag about that in just a minute. So, all right, I'll go back to this. And as soon as I get that, um, I will share that with you guys. All right, are we back to my slideshow? All right. So this is really exciting for us, for Cedar High School and um, Shelton School District. So Cedar High School now has a partnership with Olympic College. And what our partnership is, is that we are actually going to be taking classes on the Olympic College campus. So our school currently right now is located in the bottom floor of the Choice Building downtown behind Safeway on Pine Street. And next year we are moving up to the Olympic College campus. So students will be able to have the opportunity to take classes up there, feel what it's like to get onto a college campus, and just kind of have that environment. So it's pretty exciting that we have that partnership. The other thing that we have the partnership with Olympic College is, is that we they offer stackable certificates. What that means is while students are enrolled in um, Cedar High School, they will take courses, especially their junior and senior year, in four different areas that they can earn certificates that can stack among on top of each other so students can be on their way to earning an associates of art degree or even as far as to a bachelor's degree. So the other thing that we do is we offer um, industry recognized certificates 
and some of those are partnered with Olympic College. So students who are taking into um, students who are taking classes at Cedar High School can earn those certificates that can transfer directly onto a transcript at Shelton or at um, Olympic College. So they'll start their college transcript as early as freshmen. We have a focus on four different areas. We have leadership and human relations, computer science and cybersecurity, human services and education, and environmental studies. So leadership and human relations is one that directly leads to a bachelor's of arts at Olympic College. So students at um, Cedar High School would take the first few classes while they're enrolled at Cedar High School that would give them the groundwork for that uh, for that bachelor's degree or the AA degree. And then as they move on, they can continue taking more and more classes to get those certificates. Computer science and cybersecurity, that's another program that we're going, and I'll go into what those courses might look like here in a minute. But this is a really strong partnership that we're very excited about. So these are those branches of study that I was talking about. So leadership and human relations. Um, this is classes that as of right now, because we're small, um, that we'll be able to offer or we are offering at Cedar High School. We can, we'll offer a leadership class, journalism, native studies, and then at Olympic College, if students are interested in pursuing this pathway, then they could take these three classes. So improving human effectiveness, intro to organizational leadership, human relations and organization, and once they take those three classes, maybe it's their junior or senior year, they will end up with a leadership and human relations certificate that's honored um, from Olympic College. So if they decide they wanna take that to an employer, they can show that certificate that they've already got some college courses out of the way. And if they wanna continue on to their AA, they're just one step closer as those certificates that they earn stacked on top of each other. Computer science and cybersecurity. Right now, we would offer web page design, cybersecurity, and computer applications. It gets students started along that cybersecurity pathway. And then at Olympic College, if they want to continue that pathway, if that's a, something that they really want to do, it, they talk about they can take courses in networking, Microsoft LAN, uh, certified ethical hacker, which always has sounded exciting to me, or computer hacking and forensic investigator. So that's another one that I was like, oh, I want to take that class or our Cisco classes or Unix or any of those other courses. In addition to these two, we have two other ones. So right now at Cedar High School, we have a really strong uh, science and natural resources program for environmental studies. So students here would also be able to take in uh, natural resources, ecology, um, uh, Northwest streams, lakes and forests, and then as they um, go on to Olympic College, they would take environmental issues, environmental geologies, or uh, major plants. And then they could work on a certificate with Olympic College as they move forward. And the human services education, this is kind of that pathway for students who may be interested in teaching or psychology or sociology, things like those that we will offer classes in human relations, human re development, early childhood education, and psychology. And then again, those courses from Olympic College that would, um, that we would, that students would have access to and be able to take that would lead directly into an AA. So classes that may be combined. So like I said, our classes are all taught interdisciplinary. So we have courses right now. So one class is actually taught, which we teach um, plant biology and early college for native youth. So that class right now is combined and they are studying native plants to our area. They're studying how it affects or the impacts of um, with Native Americans, how it came into our region. They're doing a lot of English work in that. Um, so right now they're out in our greenhouse, they're up on the trail, they're, you know, studying the plants that, you know, are good for you and not so good for you. Um, and just kind of learning about our environment in our area. Um, and so we also have public, well, the other one that's really cool right now, I was just in the classroom is we have integrated math and art. 
So students are enrolled in an integrated math and art class. And right now I know they were just studying art from across the world. They were doing Islamic art last time I was in there and they were having to learn all the math that is involved in some of those, the artwork. They were also doing, um, they brought in, we had a guest speaker, one of our teachers actually, um, and she came in with a quilt from her tribe that they had, um, that they had brought in and had in their home that was uh, representative of stars that was very important to her culture and talked about the making of that and all the geometry and how that had to work. Um, students were also looking at mandalas and I always pronounce that wrong. Um, there are these little things, I have them on the back of my cell phone if you don't know what those are. Um, <laughs> and talking about how the geometry ties into all of that. So again, they're tying in the math and the art together. So when a student is in a class, they actually get credit for both of those classes. So it's not like you go to an English class and you write a paper and then you go to a science class and you write a research paper and it's two separate things. They're in one class combined and so they're able to get credit for that one paper for both English and science because they're using those skills. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of any other ones. Right now we do have computer applications and uh, publishing and they're, it's really fun right now. They're doing our yearbook so that's a fun class, so students can earn those credits from that. So that's a really cool one. This is kind of what I was talking about, how students earn credit. So unlike at a traditional school, if you've been there, you know, if you're at OBJ or somewhere else right now, um, you don't have like solid classes. So you won't have an English period and a math period and a science period. We combine at least two of those classes together and then students earn one credit, full credit for that class. Now, again, like I said, our, our teachers really work on the standards. And so they are um, really focused on if you've met these standards for this English, then they are going to be able to earn that credit, even if it's in a combined class. So students are also taught by teacher designed projects. So it's not like anything like K-12 where it's, you know, pushed through and somebody else's, you know, it's not a standard curriculum like that. Teachers actually spend a lot of time developing the projects and make them as relevant to our community as possible. I know that our family or our students have done when we lost um, a member of our community, Ricardo um, Del Bosque. He, uh, our students went out and started doing a, pro a project in our community about interviewing our um, Hispanic Latinx population just to kind of get a feel of everything that was going on with them. So if a student completes all their projects or courses in a year, they earn 7.5 credits. Um, students can also have the opportunity to earn credits through other means and ways if they so choose to. We do have that direct partnership with Olympic College right now for Running Start. So if students are interested, they're right there. So we don't have to worry about transportation or getting kids to the college or any of those things. They're right on the campus and can walk to a classroom next door to get in there. So that's pretty cool too. So New Tech Network, I've talked about, um, I've talked a little bit about what we do in our collaboration, but New Tech Network is a network of schools across the United States and Australia that our staff and um, we had an advisory committee from the school, from the community, that we did a lot of research when we were deciding to start a new school to kind of fill a gap maybe that we felt was missing in our community of just a different way for students to learn. We discovered New Tech Network and basically what it is, is New Tech Network focuses on project-based learning. It focuses on interdisciplinary teaching, so that combining two classes together. And it really is a collaborative program. So this network, teachers are, allowed, are able to have, they receive ongoing training throughout the year. They have a coach that actually works with them on call whenever they need it. Um, they have the collaboration with other teachers in the network so they can go and look at other teachers programs and lesson plans and projects and say this worked, this didn't, and then go in and talk to each one and say, hey, how did this work for you? Hey, can I borrow that? I know this worked really well. Let me use that with my kids. Um, or brainstorm some ideas. What ideas do you have that might be really good for my community? Here's our population. So it's really a cool network of learning for students. This is not ours because we're very new, but 
One thing that really did attract us to New Tech Network is that it has a 94% graduation rate across the network, um, across the country. 82% um, of students who attend a New Tech school persist in college at a 82% rate. And then again, they pos we do positively impact student learning. As we know, students who are able to do more hands-on interdisciplinary style of learning, they remember it more. I know I remember if I sit and do things rather than somebody just sitting and telling me what to do. So um, this is just another way that they teach that project-based learning. That, like I said, the teachers uh, create all of their lessons on their own. So they are train, highly trained in um, project-based learning and how they do this. And so um, they do an excellent job on creating things that directly affect and impact our community to help students really give back to the area that we all hope they come back to eventually to be a part of. So here's another part of New Tech Network that we really, really liked. So in a typical classroom, and I shouldn't use typical because it's in a traditional, let's call it traditional. In a traditional classroom, students are graded or evaluated on, or earn grades on you know, the assignments that they turn in, maybe participation, maybe attendance, but really, um, and the test scores and quizzes and things like that. Um, Cedar High School, we actually evaluate students on the whole child rather than just that one piece. So New Tech and Cedar, we, um, oops, sorry, didn't know I could do that with my mouse. Um, Cedar it evaluates students on these five learning outcomes. So knowledge and thinking, this is kind of your assignments and your projects and you know, presentations, things like that, things that you produce, maybe your tests and quizzes. So we want kids to be able to know how to problem solve and make decisions and things like that. But more importantly, we also ingrate on agency. And agency is a word that not many people are familiar with, but it really has that ability to develop that growth mindset. You know, I haven't got it yet. It's okay that I failed and I messed up, but I'm gonna keep trying something different. You know, you can look at different things. Um, you can look at, I mean, everybody knows the classic example of, you know, Thomas Edison or Michael Jordan, how many times they tried something and failed, and then they ended up coming back. That's really what we wanna teach kids. And honestly, also to teach them to advocate for themselves. Hey, I really don't get this. I know I messed up. How can I, how can I try this again? We also teach collaboration. So a lot of us who are in, um, who have jobs or we're out in the community, we know that collaborating with each other is really important. And sometimes once you get to a job outside of high school or as an adult, they don't really teach you that anymore. They just expect you know how to work with each other. So one thing that we do is we do a lot of collaborative projects and we work really hard to teach students that, you know, we don't want you to be the one who's carrying the team. You know, sometimes you're either the one who kind of maybe slacks or sometimes you're the one who just carries everybody because nobody else does their part and you want to make sure you get the grade on it. Students actually have individual contracts that they sign together. And then that's again where the agency is of like being able to teach kids, hey, I'm not really, you know, hold, you're not really holding up your end of the bargain. Here's what else we need. So we teach kids how to have those conversations. Um, students are also evaluated on their written communication because we do that across all disciplines and all grades because we know how important written communication is. And same with oral communications. So communicating those in presentations or however they're going to present something. So all of those get combined in order to um, get a student's final grade. So this is what we are looking, this is what a grade book looks like. Now I know a lot of you, if you're in the Shelton School District right now, you're used to Skyward or you are used to um, K-12 right now or things like that. But this is what a grade book looks like at Cedar High School. We use a program called Echo and every day students log in to their Echo account, it kind of looks like Google Classroom. They click on a little picture of their class and it brings them up to their agenda. And the teachers every single day put in an agenda that talks about what they're learning that day, where to find all the assignments, um, you know, and anything else that they need, any research that they might help, you know, they might need like that. So they go in and students go into that. This is also where everything's graded. That's where students will submit assignments. Um, this is, that's where students will go again, like I said, to go find grades. 
So this is the grade book. So if you look at this student right here, the student has world history and their overall, can you guys see my arrow when I'm circling? Okay, so the overall score is an 82.8% in this class. But if this student was just being evaluated on knowledge and thinking, they would actually have a 78%. So because we want to make sure that we're evaluating students on this whole picture, students are graded on agency. So this student has an 88% in agency, 83 in collaboration, 78 in knowledge and thinking, 92 in oral communication, and 73 in written. So when you average all those together, that's how they get this 82% as an overall score. Now, the nice thing about ECHO is we have a student account and we have a parent account. So parents can log in and access a student's assignments. They can access their grades at any time. So that's another feature that we really like. Up here, this is an average of all of the five um, learning outcomes. So as a teacher, I can go in and I can look and say, this student is doing really well in oral communication. They've got this down. They've got a 94%, they've got, they've got it made. But as a teacher, I can also look at this in a class and say, oh, you know what, they're really kind of struggling or that's the lowest area in written communication. So I can go back to them, whether it's a world history class or their Spanish class or even algebra class and say, hey, you know what, how about you present this idea of your learning standards using written communication? And that's gonna help the student to earn more points or more higher percentage in that area. Really, it's not about the points, it's really getting those skills. So that's kind of what a grade book would look like. In order to transfer everything to transcripts, I know people ask me this question, to transfer everything to transcripts, our teachers do because Skyward is the program that the district uses to create those transcripts. Our teachers go in and enter these overall scores into Skyward just as one assignment. So it'll show up on the transcript just like any other, um, any other class. Because we do combine classes, let's say we offer world history and language arts, it would kind of be broken up like this again, especially on the transcript. So when you're transferring to another school or a college or a four-year college, um, it would have all of those individual courses on there. It wouldn't have it like separated, you know, on what we title the course or anything. All these would be on there to tie into a four-year college transcript for two years. So this is a question I get. Um, what it, is Cedar, right, Cedar High School right for you? So this is one of the slides that I show students. In fact, I was very fortunate. I got to go out to Hood Canal today, school district. It was so good to see kids and um, get to present a little bit to them about what we're doing. So is Cedar right for students? This is really kind of up to you guys and I'm more than happy to answer other questions, but these are some things that we really value. Um, do you want to take classes using those real world issues? We do a lot of things with the community. Um, we really are trying to reach out to businesses and our community members and say, what are some problems we have here and how can we help solve those? Because our kids in our community are brilliant. They really are. And they have some great ideas that I know that at times um, students may, you know, students think of that adults don't. Um, so that's a, a one thing that we're really that we really try to do is and do students want to learn? Do you want to learn in a project based learning model? Do you want hands on collaborative learning? Are you motivated? Um, do you want to do those creative critical thinking? Do you want to work in collaboration? We do have a strong commitment to diversity and equity. We want to make sure that every student has an opportunity to uh, be a part of this, which is pretty exciting for, you know, I think I'm pretty passionate about it. Um, do, they like, do you like the idea of combining two or more subjects into one class? Um, are you interested in any of these fields of leadership or education or computer science, cybersecurity, environmental studies, any of those areas? Uh, are you interested in earning certificates that'll help you get a job after graduation? Or are you interested in the opportunity to take running start classes? I would also add on there, are you interested in uh, taking classes on the college campus since we will be located there? So those are a couple things that I always ask students to kind of think about. Um, do students have access to the SHS gym? I saw that question in there, and this is actually a great question. I got it earlier today. Students will have access to any pro, any um, after school class that, uh, sorry, after school sport or a, uh, activity that Cedar High School doesn't offer. Because we are a small school, um, 
we don't we don't have our own sports teams or things like that, but everything students are able to attend Shelton High School dances and they're able to attend their clubs that we don't offer. They can do ROTC if they choose to. Um, they can do any of the you know other things that Shelton High offers. They can play basketball, they can play soccer. Our schedules are in a way that um, that we've committed to make sure that our students at Cedar High School have the same opportunities in the district. Another student, another question that got brought up today is about transportation. And I do have Holly here, but I'm just gonna say, um, yes, students will have transportation because, and Holly, if I'm misspeaking, just tell me, um, but it'll be just like any other school in our district that it will have a bus route. Now I'm not sure where that's gonna be or if there's gonna be a transfer bus from Shelton High School, like they do down to Choice or something like that, but there will definitely be transportation for students to get to Cedar High School. Um, I am going, okay, how do I enroll? This is always another question that I get. Um, talk to your counselor. You can either do that. You can go to our website, which I put a QR code. So if you have your cell phone, if you're on your computer, you wanna scan it on your cell phone, you can get that too. Um, and, or you can print out an application yourself. You can talk to your counselor. You can turn it into your counselor. You can email it to myself. Um, my email is on this page if you wanna jot it down. Uh, I can also put it in the chat for you, my email address. Um, and then if you have other questions, uh, you can just email me. So counselors will be able to bring applications to me. I am, a, you are able to get them printed off right now. Right now we are located, like I said, um, at the bottom of the choice building, but next year we're gonna be moving. But for right now, this that's where you can get applications. Or you can scan here and you can see what an application looks like. Um, there are some questions to it. So it's a little bit more than, um, it is a little bit more than just a traditional, hey, I'm answering this about myself. And the reason for that, you, if you look at the application, the reason for that is because we really wanna know that this is the right fit for you. It's, you know, it's really about what's best for your learning style and what options um, that you're aware of all the options in our school district. You know, we've got three options for high school students. We've got Shelton High School, which offers some great, amazing programs. We offer um, Cedar High School that you guys just heard a little bit about, and we offer Choice High School. So you have three different options of things, of programs and schools that you guys can attend. And I know it's a really big decision as you're attending high school. So. I think I have my video now and I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. But before I find it, does anybody have any questions that I can answer? I know I went over a lot, so I appreciate you guys listening to me. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go to our, let me see if I screen share. Let's see if I can do this. By screen share, and then I'm going to go to our Cedar High School website. Oh, I didn't enable all these different things. Share sound. Okay. And then I want to show you guys this video and see how. Oh, what? What do you mean it's forbidden? Hold on. <laughs> Just a second. Um, I know I've got it right here. Just one second, sorry about that, guys. Technical difficulties. Okay, here we go. Start sharing this screen, share sound. All right, let's see if I can figure out how to make this bigger. Change, let's see. Not quite sure how to do this yet. Hold on, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, there we go. You guys see it?
right. Well, thank you guys um, for letting me share that. I was pretty excited. Our kids were excited to be in that video. So um, it was kind of fun to kind of fun to put together. So I know I've done a lot of talking. Um, I believe Stacy has been helping me out and answering questions in the chat. So um, are there any questions people would like to ask me now? I know it's five o'clock, 540 on a... Hi. <laughs> Hello. So I have a question. Um, so students who need to be evaluated to have to be on an IEP, how would you guys go about that? Um, well, any student who needs to be evaluated for an IEP, it's no different than any other school in our school district. Um, we would go through the same process. We would have typically a student goes through an SST process and then they go through and meet with our school psych psychologist and do a formal assessment and then we get together a team. So it's no different than any other school in okay. the Shelton School District. Okay, great. Um, yeah. So how about, um, so my student kind of like was overwhelmed during the whole year. He shut down. It was hard to get him engaged again. So um, how would we go about, does he get that this whole year zapped out? Because he really didn't put much effort in like anything. He did, but he didn't. He just got, he just was very overwhelmed and it was just so hard to get him engaged. So with that being said, does he have to restart the year or can he do, um, can he go on to the next year, like in next grade and do backup work from the previous year? I don't know how you guys would do that, depending on the situation, I guess. Yeah. So or, yeah, so a student who, just like, again, any other school, but typically if a student, uh, as far as grades and passing or not passing, things like that, that's kind of up to the individual school and that class and things like that. So, but he or she would not have to repeat the grade, um, but if they're at a high school level, which I'm assuming they are, then they would have the opportunity to do uh, courses through Fuel Ed, so online credit retrieval classes, they would take their normal classes for if they were freshmen this year, then sophomore year, they would take their normal freshman or sophomore classes, but then they could do some uh, other classes through fuel ed as far as for credit recovery and retrieval and things like that. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. And if I can just add a little bit to that, I put it in the chat too, but some of the great opportunities for credit recovery, especially because this year has been so hard for most students, um, right. because of the interdisciplinary classes and the way they're set up to be standards based, it could be that a student could earn more credit in a trimester than they might in another school based upon the standards that they're meeting. Also, um, the nice thing about being on a trimester system is we do have more credits offered in the 10th and 11th and 12th grade years than a student might need to graduate. So even if they don't take a sled, they could probably retrieve some credit that way. And then finally, um, if they take those courses their junior or senior year, if they're able to take running start courses, every running start course at the college uh, a five credit course counts for a whole year of high school. So sometimes that's another way students can retrieve credit. I also oh, that would be that, awesome. Yeah. yeah, I also hope the state will give us some um, uh, waiver information possibly for our ninth and 10th graders, but we're not positive that will come down because of the pandemic. But if not, there's still plenty of ways we can help you guys retrieve credit. Absolutely. So, Thank you. so this program will be ideal for somebody who has not... Um, received a lot of credits for this year and you know trying to catch up on a you know on a whole year basically so basically this would be the great place for him to go yeah it would be a great yeah it would definitely be a great opportunity you know especially having the in-person right now we are running um full in person so our students come four days a week and they are out at 110 so they start from 740 to 110 they're monday tuesday thursday friday so that we've been very lucky you saw in our video our small class sizes so right now yes. we are four days a week which is great um so yeah students uh who are really weren't that engaged now they're really ready to commit to that engagement this would be a great fit for them yeah good that i'm excited for that um yeah. okay well thank you so much thank you for the question i appreciate it hi my name is Anne marie do you guys hi. have a have a, like a connection with the skill center we, are you talking, oh, oh, New Market Skill Center. Yeah, so I went, I went to West Sound Tech in Bremerton, but I know that there's another one out here locally. 
I saw yeah. that's yeah. is there a connection with them? We are not directly connected with them. They're part of another school district, but they're part of our consortium. So if students are interested in any of those pathways, um, our counselor can help connect them. So they're able to take classes at the skill center in uh, Tumwater and we provide transportation there and they could take half their day there and then come and for the other half of the day here at, with us at Cedar High School. Okay, so how did, uh, so another question, how did, oh, the, no, you're good. how did the credits differ from the high school? How does what? The credits. So I don't, credits. Know, I don't know what the credit, what credits Shelton High School needs to graduate. So how does that work out with the this school? So I know that they start out at 7.5, but Stacy was saying as they further on, they can get more credit. Yeah, so Shelton High School and Cedar, we offer the same number of credits, um, but it's really how the students earn them. So at Shelton High School, they have to take, at least from my understanding, and I've got some Shelton High School people here, so feel free to jump in. They would take like an English 9 class, an English 10 class, an English 11, and an English 12. So four years worth of English in that area. Where our classes um, are, because they're combined, students are really going off the standards. So they would take, you know, English and math or English and science together. So they may get some extra of their English classes. We don't call the classes English 9, 10, 11, and 12 because we want to just make sure that they have four full credits worth of, which is basically two times four, eight trimesters, sorry, it's late, um, eight trimesters of English throughout their high school career. So they will end up with more credits than they need to graduate. Um, so they'll have 7.5 offered for four years and they need 24 to graduate. So all the graduation requirements for Cedar as well as um, Shelton High School are the same. It's just how students earn the credits. So when they graduate, is that with Shelton High School or does Cedar have a separate graduation? We have a separate graduation. Can I ask one more question? Sorry. Absolutely, you can ask as many as you want. <laughs> oh, snap. I think it just, I think I just lost it. Okay. I, yeah, I'll come up with it. I'll let somebody else talk, sorry. Okay. No, you're good, I appreciate it. So really quick, I, I know if I'll let somebody, I just wanted to share really quick about the application. So here's what the application looks like. And I just got it off of our Cedar website. When you go here, it gives you a little thing at the bottom and I have it in English and Spanish if there's, you know, if that's a, if you need the Spanish version as well. Um, so here's kind of the application. What we, oh, let's see if I can min minus that a little bit. So this talks a little bit about what our school is about basic information just so you guys kind of have an idea we really do feel that a partnership with parents is vital and so we do ask students and parents and our staff to commit um, to this partnership and so you will see in this some things that this is what our school and when you guys look at the application you'll see what we're committing to as a school and what we really ask as a student and parent that you commit because we know that collaboratively it takes a village <laughs> to raise our children. I have a son who's a sophomore and it takes a village. So um, this is kind of where it is a little different. We do ask questions, uh, students some of these questions and hopefully you guys can see that. And this really helps just drive the conversation that I have with students in order to see if this is the right fit. And if not, or they're like, I don't really want to work in a group. I don't want to do anything collaboratively. I don't like any of those programs. Um, or they say, I really want to work 100% online. Well, this may not be the right fit, but we're going to we're going to find out what it is. And so this helps drive that conversation with students and families. So we ask a couple of these little checkbox question, box questions, um, what their biggest strength is, why do they want to come here? This also kind of gives just, like I said, an idea to be able to start and connect with a student. We do a lot on, we really do believe in that small school environment of family-like atmosphere. So we wanna make sure that the relationships are there and strong with our students and our staff and student to student. And then there's just, you know, tell us about yourself. None of these, if you're, if you're a student and you're listening to this, no, they don't have to be essay questions. Yes, they can be one or two sentences. It's really an idea I just want to get, you know, get an idea of who you are and why you're interested. Um, so that's kind of what the application looks like. So no, they don't have to be essay questions. I see some panic looks on people's faces, on kids' faces when I show this sometimes. So would you prefer the kids fill that part out or can we sit down yes. with our kids and write it? 
Oh, you can definitely sit down with your child and write it. Um, you know, as long as the student obviously has voice in it and it's not, you know, parent voice. Um, I just want to really know what the kid is, what the, what your student really wants and how we can help support them in their education. I do remember my other question. I am um, working with my son to get an IEP now, and I've had a meeting with all of his teachers where everybody, all of his teachers and myself agree that Cedar High School would be a better choice for him than high school. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering, would a letter from one of his teachers help his application process? You know, honestly, I mean, you're what more than welcome to give me more information. That always helps um, when I'm talking with students. Uh, but, you know, really, it's going to be the conversation that I'll have with you and, you know, and your student to make sure it's the right fit and kind of um, just be able to have that conversation. So, I mean, you're welcome to give any more information than you want, but it isn't going to, you know, just because he's being tested for an IP is not going to in any way impact his ability to attend Cedar High School. Yeah. Hey, we have a couple. We have a couple questions about student to staff ratio, and I'm putting them in the chat. But I would love to have our teachers mention Kurt and Chris. Uh, what are your class sizes right now? Now we weren't able to recruit fully because of the pandemic, so our numbers are pretty small right now. They won't be quite this small next year. But Chris, what are your smallest class you've had this year and your largest class? And maybe Kurt, if he's available too. Well, let's see. Smallest class. Um, Probably under 10 students. My largest class right now, I think, has got 19 or 20. They vary. And then um, I'm teaching with the other, another staff member for one class, and we probably have around 20, 25 students total between us two teachers. So like I put in the chat, new tech requires no more than 25 to one, but the district has so far been supporting our efforts to keep it at 20 to one. And when they calculate those OSPI numbers, sometimes they'll be throwing in there all your certificated staff, but maybe there's a special education class with five kids or a welding class with 10, and then they average it out. So Susie, who is a Shelton High and grade Academy counselor, um, did mention that it's about 28 to 31. But we're lucky. The district is funding us at a smaller student to staff ratio right now. But sometimes the classes are combined because you want to have that math teacher meeting with the science teacher. They're all looking at how it's interdisciplinary. So you might have 30 or 40 kids together for a little while. And then they separate out, go to a workshop, go to project time. Um, and it's all based around authentic real world pro projects. So the kids are trying to solve problems that are real to the world. So pretty cool model, I think. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Chris. And I think we may have lost Kurt. That's okay. When you walk around our school, the classes are pretty spread out and small for the most part, I'd say. If you were to walk into each classroom, I mean, there's, it's not huge. It's not overwhelming to the students. They feel safe. It's a smaller environment. Get a lot of extra one-on-one -on -one help. Yes. Thank you, Chris. Are there any other questions or anything else I can help um, answer from you guys, students, parents, staff, community? All right. Well, I will put my, um, I'm going to put my email in the chat. Apparently, I can't do it and talk at the same time. Um, there is my email in the chat. Please feel free to email me with any questions um, that you might have. I would love to talk to you and your students if there's any other things that you would like to know. Um, here is also, um, there is also the link to our website where you can easily access uh, the applications or other information that you may want to know that I didn't talk about in the last 54 minutes. And I apologize for talking so much, but I really appreciate you guys giving us some time. And um, uh, sorry, I was reading in the chat. I think you're answering that one. Oh, okay. That one, yeah. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate your time. And if there's any, other, if there's not any other questions, uh, thank you, and have a good evening. And I noticed Holly put a Holly put uh, the phone number for transportation. If you have questions, in the chat as well.
So um, feel free to reach out to Holly if you have other questions. All right, I'll leave this. Um, I'll leave this room open if anybody has any other questions. Otherwise, thank you so much and have a good evening.